Peter Elides with you. Stock Market Cycles update for Wednesday, February 19. These updates, the, the object of these updates, we should say, is to show you how our projection software works. This is software that has been put together in conjunction with our little programming wizard. I don't know why I call him little. He's not that little. He's a young man of around 30 years of age, Stefan Sherman. I hope you're out there watching Stefan. Stefan was in Switzerland. He's now moved to Bulgaria with his significant other. Um, and we want to get this software finished. We want to get it into your hands. When you get the software, you're, you're going to get a lot more than just the software. You're going to get the offsets that are required to get the projections that we've been showing you for the past five or six months. Perhaps one of the best examples we can give you is last night. So those of you who watched yesterday's update will realize, see the vertical line here? That's about where we were last night as we went on and did the update. And the last part of our update, we showed you an upside projection based on Globex prices. We can do projections with Globex. It takes the certain offsets that we use to do them, but they can be done. And you will get those offsets when you get the software. This was the projection we gave you last night. 33.90.04, 33.98.37. Now, mind you, that projection was given down here when the S&P was trading oh, around the 33.75.76 level. So, this is the projection that the software was giving. We gave that to you at the time, and this is what happened after that. Okay? So now this projection has been satisfied. In fact, initially right up to the lower end of the band, later on up to the higher end of the band. So that's been satisfied, and now we say, have all projections been satisfied? On a minimal basis, the answer is yes. Let's go through the sequence on the S&P cash. We'll use 30-minute charts for the S&P cash. Okay, we're going to go through these in sequence. These are 30-minute charts. For the futures, we use 27-minute charts. There are 15 such periods in the day. For the futures, we use 30-minute charts. There are 13 such bars throughout the day. So here we stand now with the S&P. Let's go through these projections one by one. We got an upside projection that was easily met. That was a day or two ago. We got a short-term downside that's already been met. So this one is telling us, it's giving us no significant information. The next longer one, upside projection, the upper end of which was 33.92.40. And the high today was 33.93.50. So that's almost a perfect projection up to the upper end. How about the next longer one? The next longer projection called for 33.91.65 to 34.02.27. We met the lower end of that. So you can argue there is still room. But be aware it has been met easily on a minimal basis. In fact, it came probably about, uh, oh, I don't know, one-eighth, one-sixth of the way into the projection area. So it's been fully met on a minimal basis. Let's go to the next one. This one, there were crossings between crossings here, so no information there, but there are certainly no upside projections outstanding, as you can see. So that one is not important to us now. The next longer one, look at this. That was given way back here. The low occurred back on uh, January 31st, and this is where the crossing occurred, and that gave this upside projection. Well, we got into it just barely yesterday, and again today, actually today this happened because this is the 19th. We had just missed it back here on the 13th and we got into it, met it fully on a minimal basis today. So the reason for showing you these is all of the S&P upside projections have been met 
at least on a minimal basis. Can we go higher? Yes. Uh, this upside here calls for 34.35. That's significantly higher than we are right now. Uh, but the fact that all of them have been met and there are a couple of other things happening, which we'll show you, technically suggests that this is a time for the possibility of some kind of market top. I've told you two things are happening technically. One, the advanced decline line has been confirming the new highs, although that's not the case today. The S&P cash went to a new all-time high. And let's take a look at the advanced decline line. Okay, here is our advanced decline line. And as you can see, we don't even need to zoom in on that. You can see that the S&P, the S&P cash made a new all-time high today. Look where the daily advanced decline was. Let's actually make this a little larger. So we will zoom in on it. There we are. The high occurred a few days ago. Today, the S&P went to a new all-time high. So we finally got a little divergence there. I'm not saying it's a significant one, but with the S&P going to a new all-time high close today, the uh, advanced decline line did not confirm. The other thing that we mentioned with the trading index moving averages, which do not appear to be in the right configuration for an important top, but the cycle projections are telling us be careful here because all the S&P cash projections have been met on a minimal basis. That's all we need to know now. Um, let's show you the one other thing. Okay, here's the other thing we want to show you that leads us to believe that the market could be in a short-term situation with vulnerability here. This is the S&P close. Notice the new all-time high close today right up here. Highest close in history. Guess what this line is, folks? Now, if you put a bar chart up, and I'll do that for you right now, working with a bar chart, see it poke its head above today? But what I did today was I drew just the closing price trend line. That's the black line. And look what happened with that today. It closed virtually exactly on that trend line. Now, let's go back historically so you can see. Okay, there's the black trend line, which begins. Let me go back for you and show you where it begins. That begins at the external high. Now, we've changed this on a closing basis. It's not exactly the same as it is on an intraday basis. But the black line begins at the July of 14 high, which is the most external closing high coming into the January of 18 high. So watch this. That's the July of 14 high. Here is the January of 18 closing high. And today we hit it virtually exactly again at a time when all projections were being met on a minimal basis. Yes, there is still room for higher. That's telling you, be careful here. And that's all we're going to say right now. Today is Wednesday. We have two more days to fill you in if something different should happen. Have yourselves a great day. Thank you for watching. Prepare to buy this software, folks. Don't tell me you're not excited by it. Prepare to purchase it or lease it. We don't know exactly what we're going to do with it yet. But it's coming closer and closer, We hopefully within four to six weeks at the longest now. So thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Please put some favorable comments underneath the YouTube video. If there's something you don't like, let us know. And give us a few thumbs up if you feel like doing that. Thanks a lot for watching.